Hello, welcome to Curio Bytes, bite-sized explainer video. So in this brief video, we will see what does this vaccine efficacy means, the efficiency of the vaccine. You might have heard, you know, uh, like Pfizer vaccine is 95% or Moderna vaccine or here in India, COVID shield is around 82% or 83%. What does that actually mean, that particular thing? That is what this video is all about. So, you know, um, many people think that this 95% efficacy means 95% of people are protected by the vaccine you see uh, like uh, those who who gets vaccine out of 195 percentage will eventually uh, will not get the covid 19 while the rest five percentage will eventually develop the covid 19 if exposed you know so that kind of uh, con uh, understanding is general misconception i also thought that way so that is what right in everyday meaning like 95 percent chance of rain so that way 95 percent success means or efficacy of virus means uh, you know 95 percentage of people are protected by, from the disease so that is actually very common misunderstanding of how the vaccine efficacy works and you might wonder even even the specialized uh, people in the field like uh, you know the, the epidemiologist also make this mistake for example infectious biologist very famous journal the top-notch journal is called lancet infectious diseases even editorial of the disease, can you believe it? Editorial is by the really top uh, high-flying scientists. They also made the same mistake. Check it out. I linked up in the description section of this video. So, you know, if it is only five, per, like five out of 100 get sick, even after vaccination, then what's the point of getting vaccinated, isn't it? Uh, because naturally also people are anyway protected, isn't it? 99 percentage are kind of uh, uh, won't actually get into serious sickness. Only one percentage will get really bad sick out of COVID-19. So then what's the point of this vaccine if this is how uh, we have to understand, if this is what it means? So there is a very interesting explainer article in The Lancet. Uh, what does 95 percentage COVID-19 vaccine efficacy really means? And uh, this is uh, uh, Lancet Infectious Disease Editor. Just check it out uh, in the... Uh, in the link of this show notes of this video, I have linked it up here. So basically, uh, if you look at the efficacy of this, in many of these vaccines, so these vaccines have got clinical trials, right? Phase one, phase two, and phase three, human clinical trials. So these data should be revealed to the public if they keep it private, you know, and these vaccines cannot be, it's not scientific. So if the vaccines needs to be scientific, if the clinical trials needs to be accepted by vast majority of the people, the scientists, if the scientific consensus needs to be formed, all these data needs to be released. So this is the data that you can see it here. Uh, this New England Journal of Medicine, this article, just have a look at this article. Again, I linked up in the show notes of this video, is that safety and efficacy of B and T 162B2 mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. So this is basically uh, the Pfizer vaccine, more, uh, you know, Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, the German vaccine. Uh, and if you look at this particular, uh, the PDF of this journal article carefully, you will see that uh, the vaccine efficacy is something to do with relative risk. So this term is uh, coming in statistics. It's very, very simple to understand. Let me explain to you. So the, the formula to calculate this particular vaccine efficacy or relative risk is 100 multiplied by, then the bracket stops, 1 minus and everything inside this parenthesis. The attack rate with vaccine divided by attack rate with placebo. What does that mean? Let us actually consider the, the example. This is actually not really example. This is exactly I picked up from that journal article earlier I shown you, right? This journal article, I picked up the data from this particular journal article of the Pfizer vaccine. So you can see that there are this, this kind of table is known as contingency table, two-way contingency table. There are two uh, you know rows and two columns. Then all these are summary, right? So these rows are vaccine and placebo. You know, it's like drug versus control group. So placebo means people who are not taking any vaccine, right? Vaccine group. Now there are two columns here, COVID-19 plus no COVID-19. That means that those people, how many people eventually developed COVID-19 and people who did not get COVID-19. If everything is kind of complicated to you, let me explain again very carefully. So this particular table means 
out of 21,728 people who got vaccine, vaccine means this particular vaccine, that is basically Pfizer vaccine, BioNTech vaccine, the German vaccine. Those who, uh, out of all these people who got the vaccine, eight got COVID-19 positive, you see. While 21,720 got uh, did not get the COVID-19 that is what so it's really really low risk of developing COVID-19 after getting vaccine but mind that these are actually symptomatic COVID-19 you know if it's asymptomatic people don't go for testing right so symptomatic COVID-19 risk is really low so if you actually divide it with the total out of 21,728 eight got right so that is what you call the attack rate so it is very very low the attack rate is 0.03 six eight percentage so 0 0.03 percentage is very low remember earlier you thought it's five percentage no it is 0 0.03 percentage it's really really low now the other group placebo group placebo group means people who did not get the vaccine instead they got just a uh, you know like serum or just a, a saline you know the, but because of the psychological uh, you know placebo itself is an effect so to ward off uh, this is a standard practice in any epidemiological trial so the drug testing trial or vaccine testing trial so out of 21,890 roughly equal you know out of 21,890 162 people eventually became COVID positive they became symptomatic uh, you know COVID-19 they, they developed the disease so if you calculate the attack rate for that 162 divided by 21,890 so that would equal to 0 0.007401 so that means uh, you know 0.74 that is what the percentage if you convert percent means just multiplied by 100 so 0 0.74 that is quite a lot you see because this one is 0 0.03 here it is 0 0.7 look very very high right so now if you want to compare this attack rate just divide it you know so the first value divided by second value see 0 0.00368 000 divided by 0 0.007401 is equal to 0 0.0497 this one is called relative risk now you got the point right so this relative risk is what the entire inside the parenthesis you know so relative risk is just both this risk just divide these two risks vaccine divided by placebo so this relative risk one minus relative risk is the next term so one minus the relative risk one minus 0 0.04975 is equal to 0 0.95 you know a uh, lot of decimal points here now finally you multiplied with 100 so 0.95 you multiplied with 100 that would means 95 percentage so 95.07 remember this is i picked up directly from the uh, journal article you know so this is how to calculate exactly the vaccine efficacy you know so the efficacy doesn't mean that 95 percentage people are protected while five percentage are riskier no that is incorrect way to presume it so the correct way to interpret is that vaccinated people had 95 percentage lower risk of getting covid 19 compared with the control group uh, you know these are the the cohorts of the participants in the the vaccine trials uh, and these control group the placebo groups were not vaccinated that you should know it they were under the placebo you know so that is called case control trial right so control means placebo case you know of course those people who eventually became positive right so in other words the vaccinated people in the pfizer clinical trials were 20 times less likely than the control group to get covid 19. so the vaccine were really really effective so that is what the 95 percentage efficacy truly means you know and the other vaccine if you look it's equally pretty good effective efficacy is very good uh, though it is not as good as so pfizer or moderna vaccine for example chadox and cov2 vaccine that is basically azt1222 so that is basically uh, the vaccine that we used here in india called covishield phase 3 clinical trial is that uh, after one dose it is 76 percentage you know while after the second dose the booster dose it becomes 81.2 percentage which is also very high you know so much more than 90 per, 99 percentage for sure 
and now out of 17177 persons so this is i picked up from the there actually the phase 3 clinical trial after second dose so out of 17177 332 became positive but none got serious or died so that is what you have to actually see it nobody whoever gets vaccine uh, you know become seriously ill or died in the phase 3 clinical trial well there are actually some reports coming up here and there that a doctor uh, in Delhi died even after taking two doses of COVID shield this and that so you know it could be uh, some random events right these are everything is risky right so there is some risk associated with everything right it's not because of the vaccine alone or you know you cannot generalize that vaccine doesn't work so there are a lot of selective biases right people who are surviving uh, who are not getting vaccine is not getting any they don't the media don't want to portray them in their newspaper but if one person dies then that becomes a big story and people generalize it but that is incorrect so I would like to emphasize that nothing is risk free in the science friends science deals with the risk and probabilities uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, during your childhood days too, I got MMR vaccine. I'm sure you also got it. Do you know what is the efficacy, the success rate of the MMR vaccine? 97 percent. It's not 100. You know, for against the measles, it's a, it's a combination vaccine, right? Mumps, measles, and rubella. Against measles, it's 97 percentage. While against mumps, it is 88 percentage. It's uh, it's not. 100% no, only uh, maybe the, the church priest will tell you, right? If you pray to God, it's 100% you will get faith healing verse 100%. But in science, no, there is nothing 100%. You know, we all do a lot of risk benefit analysis. Even a doctor, if you go for a surgery, uh, the doctor will tell you what are the risks associated with the surgery, but what are the benefits that you, you get out of it? Uh, you know, in medicine or science, this is really, really important to see what is the risk and benefits. Just like cost benefit analysis in economics or ecology, even ecology, cost and benefits. You know, uh, for example, uh, uh, altruism. You know, so is it how much is the cost and how much is the the benefit of the entire species? So all these things are really important in sciences. These different analysis, and then we do this recommendation. You know. So it's unlikely that these vaccines will cause serious ramifications. So distrust these uh, misconceptions and fake news and conspiracy theories, alarming friends everywhere. Uh, uh, even for cycle, for example, I love cycling. Uh, many of my colleagues say that cycling is highly risky, you know, uh, because of the uh, road crash, uh, you know, because you're not protected. Uh, so the drivers are really rash then then i ask the same thing uh, how about the benefits you know if you drive the car every single day then you are really prone for cardiovascular disease um, my heart would be in much better position because i cycle every single day you know or risk of birth defects you know if you are planning to have a baby so have you ever considered what is the risk of having a baby i um, mean birth defect in the us the cdc's report again i linked up in the show notes it is one in 33 extremely high isn't it one baby out of every 33 babies eventually have some kind of birth defect but does that actually stop the the couples from having babies attempting to uh, make babies no right so because uh, you know the benefits far exceed that of the risks isn't it so that is the, the way that we should actually see it i will never say that the vaccines are risk free 100 percent is risk free no there are risk with every single thing but still you have to think about yourself uh, you know risk versus benefit so how much benefit that vaccines uh, provide you so you see that in covid 19 management the three most important measures i keep on saying that in every covid 19 videos that physical distancing is number one mask is number two and vaccine now we have got the third uh, you know third weapon i can say against COVID-19 is a vaccine. It's a gift of science, you know. So COVID-19, friends, it is an airborne disease, right? And uh, of course, uh, because it's airborne, earlier uh, guidelines, we have to change it. For example, PPE, the, the, you know, the, the personal protective equipments, kits and all are not that very important because it's airborne. You see that it's mask, you know, it's a respiratory airborne, the, the particles. So uh, wearing this kind of a special, uh, you know, plastic cloth, 
you know you might have seen that during the uh, you know the uh, what is that uh, funeral uh, process positions of the COVID-19 uh, victims so you will see it this kind of PPE kits I don't think it's really required uh, you know and also the dead bodies are quite safe it's you have to be more worried about the people who are living with the COVID-19 because it's respiratory infection so when you go to a, a public space always wear a mask you know and maintain the physical distancing and if you haven't got a job get the vaccine that's really important and you need to have a combined approach you know even if you you are wearing the mask you need the physical distancing and even after the vaccine you need both physical distancing and masking you know so that's that's very very important for uh, you know for protection from the COVID-19 so that is what I would like to emphasize on this video so you know uh, there are several videos I uh, linked up in the show notes of this video as well that uh, I released about COVID-19 including uh, the new video about antibody dependent enhancement and COVID-19 yet another news spreading alarmingly look back news fake news that you know that these vaccines actually lead to a phenomenon called antibody dependent enhancement and that ultimately lead to people become susceptible because of vaccine no it, it's not it's a fake news i busted it in a new video please check it out and how not to get covid 19 all the evidence-based guidelines on how not to get covid 19 that's also i released a, a last week please check it out and how to manage covid 19 in case you get COVID-19 how to manage it as per the current evidence-based research you know evidence-based medicine and also uh, do check out my curiosity it's a science show week you know it's a monthly science show uh, in which I, I sum up uh, everything that has moved the sciences in in the last month so in case you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe to my channel and if you like this video please click thumbs up and please take care of yourself and if you can please take care of someone else too. Have a nice day.